Hi everyone, Nathan here with ATC Cooling and Heating. And today, we're going to show you how to tell if your AC or heat pump system is low on refrigerant. Now, it doesn't matter if your system uses R22 or R410A, R32, or even the new refrigerant called R454B. And it doesn't matter if you call it charge, refrigerant, freon, or gas. These symptoms, they're universal. And best of all, you won't need any gauges or EPA refrigerant license or fancy tools to diagnose your system. All right, let's get started. In the summertime, when your system is trying to cool your home, the most common symptom of a system that's low on refrigerant is no airflow from your ducts. Doesn't make sense, does it? Why would a system stop blowing air when it's low on refrigerant? Well, when an AC or a heat pump system is low on charge, during the cooling cycle, it will, it will overcool the evaporator coil. Now that's the coil inside your air handler or on top of your furnace. And when that coil gets overcooled, frost can form on it and the whole thing eventually turns to a block of ice. And of course, air does not flow through ice. So here's a picture of what that looks like. Keep in mind, this coil is inside your unit so it's not so easy to see. So if you notice no airflow from your vents, Go ahead and check your filter first because a very, very dirty filter can also sometimes cause your coil to freeze. But if that's okay, then you likely have a system that's low on refrigerant. Next symptom. If you notice the copper refrigerant lines going from the air handler or coil on the furnace have frost on them, that could also indicate a system that is low on charge. It could also point to a failed blower motor or significant duct restriction. Again, check that filter. But if you notice copper lines that look like this, that's a clue that you could have a refrigerant leak and your system is low on charge. This next symptom will require some careful monitoring. If your AC system isn't keeping up and you notice that the indoor temperature is drifting upward in the afternoon, then you may have the beginnings of a low charge situation. If previously your system was fine all day and kept the temperature you set, but now is losing the battle of the afternoon sun, you may have a small leak. All right, last one for air conditioning. And this one's gonna require some eagle eyes to spot, but if you notice what seems like a small oil leak around the refrigerant lines or those little caps on the outdoor unit, that is also a symptom of a leak and soon a low charge in your system. Refrigerant, you see, has a type of oil built into it, and while the gas part of the refrigerant will just evaporate into the air if there's a leak, the oil can be left behind. Now these are really hard to spot, but here's an example of what that looks like. Okay, let's say it is instead winter, not cooling season, and your system is set to heating mode. Now this situation, of course, only applies to heat pumps, but there are some symptoms that you will want to watch out for in heating mode that indicate low refrigerant. Now, the uh, backup electric heat kit, or a furnace if that's what your backup is for your heat pump, can sometimes mask these problems, but the first symptom is really hard to miss. If your heat pump is low on charge, it will start forming frost in lines or stripes around the outdoor unit. The striping indicates a low charge situation. If the whole unit is frosted over, well, that could be a bad defrost board or something else, but the striping is a really good clue to check the charge. Here's a picture of what that looks like. All right, the next symptom is if your system is staying in emergency heat mode longer and longer, that is an indication that the heat pump isn't keeping up, which could be related to a low charge situation. There's typically an emergency heat indicator on your thermostat. Watch for that. It should come on occasionally during normal operation and again when it is very very cold outside but if it's staying on longer and your power bill went up considerably then you should have your refrigerant checked here's a picture of a common Honeywell thermostat indicating that it is in emergency heat mode the last symptom to look for in heating mode is lower and lower air temperatures coming from your vents now in normal operation the air temperature out of a vent for a heat pump is 85 to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. But if that number is slipping lower and lower into the 80s and maybe even into the 70s, then that's an indication of a low refrigerant situation. Now, if a technician encounters any of these symptoms, 
he will start investigating for a system leak. When an AC or heat pump is low on refrigerant, that is a sure indicator of a leak. As otherwise, systems don't ever consume refrigerant as it works. Uh, now here's a picture of a leak detector instrument that a technician may use. The most common places for a refrigerant leak are first the evaporator coil, which is the coil that's inside the home in the air handler or on the furnace, or the condensing unit coil, which is the unit outside, the valves in and around that condensing unit outside, or in some cases, the refrigerant tubing itself. The technician may check the delta T or the change in temperature across the coil for additional confirmation, and he may start looking for a leak with a leak detector. Spotting the leak is the first step in getting the right refrigerant charge for your system, because just dropping in more refrigerant is at best a temporary fix, because it'll only leak out again. Once the leak is repaired, the technician will weigh in the required charge for your system and get your system operating again at its peak efficiency. Now if you have any questions about refrigerant or really anything HVAC, leave a comment here or contact us at atcservice.com. Thanks for watching.